Hello everyone, welcome to my art channel where we do painting tutorials. Like always, I start by taping down my paper with masking tape and then I begin by coloring all of my grassy green areas with my earthy green. I'm using it on top of the painting because I want there to be some bushes or tiny forest on the top and I add some ultramarine on top of that. I take my watercolor brush and I start activating the green and the blue. It's perfectly fine if they um, bleed into each other, if they mix, it doesn't matter because this is our very first layer, so it's fine. While it dries, I take a scrap piece of watercolor paper and I mix helio blue, cadmium orange and a bit of my earthy green and I'm going to dilute this mix a lot until I get a very very faint coffee like color and I use that to paint all of the rocks, all of the borders on top of which I'm going to have my waterfalls as you can tell by the thumbnail. So I just dilute that mix with a lot of water and I applied all across of that middle section of my painting because on top we have the sky and those faint trees and on the bottom we are going to have the lake or the river where the waterfalls pour. While it dries I take a kneadable eraser and I pick up most of my sketch from the bottom because it's going to be very light. I take my green again and using horizontal motions and a zigzag pattern. I randomly apply green, helio blue and a bit of cad orange. I leave some blank spaces beneath each of the waterfalls because that's where the water pours, it's all foamy, it's almost white so I want to preserve the white of the paper as much as possible. I take my watercolor brush, I dab it into my cup of water and I dry it on a napkin at about 50%. I want this to be wet but almost dry because once I run out of water on the brush it's going to start skipping bits and it's going to leave that white of the paper. It's going to leave those natural water sparkles you see in rivers. So it's just a neat little trick whenever painting water and you need highlights. While that dries, I take my black and I'm going to outline all of the borders, all of the big rocky areas, caves and whatnot, everything I see from my initial sketch with this black. If drawing is not your thing, there is a reference picture down in the description. But mind you, when I say reference picture, I only use those to know where to put what and how the physics behind the painting work, like how does the water pour, does it go straight, is there any, I don't know, is there an edge, uh, how does the water move. I don't know physics, I don't know biology, I don't know whatever you need to know to paint certain things, so I just look at the reference picture, but usually I end up with a very different result because I paint everything through my own view and style, if that makes any sense to you. And there is going to be a traceable available at my Patreon page, Sunshine Arts. And by checking that out, you help support me and the channel. And of course, all of the supplies as well will be linked below. I take my Helio Blue Reddish, which is my darkest blue, and I outline those loose green shapes we did in the beginning. I apply some orange on top of the blue, that way they neutralize each other and they make a nice soft shadow. I go over it with my watercolor brush just to smooth it down because we're still on the second layer and there are gonna be more details to come. I use my blue and black, again on that rocky area, so on those boulders to outline them to cast their own shadows and also the shadows behind the waterfalls. I just keep adding random dashes and dots and lines to mimic the texture of rocks. I want a very strong shadow to be casted right in the beginning of the waterfalls, right beneath that area we fill up with trees because we need the shadow for the trees. And then I just activate everything with my watercolor brush. I'm not blending, I'm just tapping and the difference 
I've said and I'm gonna say it again, when you activate you just make the colors stronger and more vibrant and when you blend you point at making things smooth. We don't need to smooth things out since this is a landscape and nature has texture, but I do want a bit more contrast in my painting and that is why I fix this layer and I activate it before moving to the next one. I add some more trees on the top side. So I'm just doing some random circles, round shapes with my green. Then I take walnut brown and a bit of black and I draw out the tree trunks. And I want a couple of branches and random greenery to frame the picture on the left side. So I'm just doing some twigs and some, and some skinny tree trunks on that side and then I cover it with earthy green. I add a bit more green to the right side as well because I want um, that one to be covered by like moss or grass, something of the sorts. And I keep outlining that rocky area where the waterfalls are, just adding more details and I add a couple of dots and tiny lines on top of the waterfalls themselves. So maybe there's like a rock peeking through the waterfall and separating it or maybe it's just a reflection. And for this third layer, again, I take my brush and I activate the tree crowns. I start the layer with of that greenery and the moss on the right side. While it dries, I take my dark blue and I outline very lightly on the waterfalls. I add some blue on top of the waterfalls and some green and some orange. I'm basically adding all of the colors I use throughout my painting on top of the waterfalls because water tends to reflect light. I don't know why you cannot really see that through my camera. I was painting at night, I had my soft boxes, or maybe it was because of my camera sinks, I don't know, but I am going to add a close-up at the end of the video in daylight so you can really see what I mean when I add all of the colors from my painting on top of the water. Then I outline all of the green things I add in the third layer, I outline the moss, I add some blue under the, th the tree crowns and under those branches on the left side, just on the bottom for an easy shadow. I also add a bit of walnut brown on top of my helium blue radish to further darken it up. And if there are any areas that are too bright, that are not as saturated like that tiny bit you saw me doing on the left side, I just add more green on top of it using a standard uh, watercolor brush like the red one you see me use for this painting is a bit more difficult than a watercolor pen brush because you have to regulate your own self with the amount of water, whereas a watercolor pen brush does that for you. So oftentimes you end up with results that are a bit lighter than what you intended for, but that's definitely not a deal breaker because you can just put more layers on top of it and fix it up very easily. I darken up the lake shore where um, the lake starts. And then with barely any water on my brush, I activate those shadows. I just add it on my final layer. I just lightly go over them enough to activate them and make it a bit more saturated and a bit more vibrant. Lastly, I just fix anything I don't like, like the tree trunk on the top right corner and just add finishing details. I'd like to give a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters for the month of April and thank you all for watching. If you found any value or use in this video, please let me know by liking, commenting and if you have not already, please consider subscribing to the channel, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. We'll see each other in the next video, bye bye!